Hey guys, Lennon is back with another video. So today we're going to be doing a 1000 kilometer re-review on the Kingsong S18. So stay tuned. All right, so Kingsong S18. I've had it for about uh, over a month now. I've put over a thousand kilometers on it and just right off the bat, I gotta say it's been a very excellent and reliable wheel. I will still say the V10F uh, has held up better, but the V10F is a lot simpler. This has got a little bit more uh, mechanical bits going on, so I can't blame it. So I've been doing a fine mixture of on and off-road with it, and obviously it's great off-road, I think everyone knows that. But on road, it's also awesome, guys. So if you live in the city and you're never gonna see off road, this is still a really good wheel as long as you don't care about speed. This to me on the road is just like a Cadillac. It just smooths off all those bumps. It's really nice and floaty. It's still beautiful, so it turns a lot of heads on the street. Um, and honestly, like I don't know if I could go back to a non-suspension wheel now. I thought I really wanted the V12, but even on the street, I think I'd still pick this up any day over that. If you've been paying attention to my other videos, you probably noticed that it used to be blue, but uh, yeah, um, it's taken a few tumbles and uh, I thought it was just best to peel off the blue because it was looking pretty bad. Um, I think my girlfriend's dog is plotting to kill me because it keeps pushing me off my wheel. But uh, yeah, so I've had uh, little cracks in the panel from numerous falls that were all my own fault. Nothing to do with the wheel at all. And these panels are super easy to replace. This, uh, this panel here is literally just a uh, Phillips here and a Phillips here, and then you just pop it off. Um, the top one is a little more complicated, but you probably won't break that. And this back piece here um, has no screws. It literally just, you kind of just pry and it comes out. So panels are super easy to replace if you do break them. Uh, there's been literally nothing inside that's broken at all. It's been super solid inside. In fact, I have to say, the build quality on this is really surprising. Like I came from InMotion and I kind of heard that the quality isn't quite as good on Kingsong. But man, I've been really, uh, really impressed with the build quality of this thing. Uh, I've taken it quite a bit apart and I say like the hardware is pretty good. I like the way it's laid out and it's actually not that hard to work on. Um, yeah, you do have to take a lot of parts off, but they're pretty logical on how they go back together. So I would say engineering wise, it's actually pretty good, better than I thought. Uh, what else is broke? So I broke the handle. It fell off a table uh, about this height, maybe a bit higher, and the handle was up. And so I broke this piece of pipe. It was kind of annoying because I was riding around without a trolley handle for two weeks and it makes them a little bit more difficult to get around town on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, super easy to fix this. Um, this handle is sold separately from like these poles. So if you break one or the other, you can buy separate parts. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any in Canada, so I had to pay an arm and a leg to get it here. But um, if this happens to you and you break these poles, you actually don't have to take anything off at all. All you have to do is try to get the broken poles out down and they'll pop out the bottom. So there's a little stopper on the bottom of this. It's a little spring loaded mechanism and that's what stops it at the bottom. It's like a, yeah, it's just a little lock. Um, but I found that if you just take something when it's getting stuck down there, like the broken one, just take a screwdriver or something and plunge it down and eventually it'll come out the bottom. Once you have both broken pieces out, just screw these back onto the handle. So don't take anything apart if you break the handle. Suspension wise guys, I actually haven't touched it in a thousand kilometers. Um, on my first review of this wheel, I said like the stock settings were just super springy, like very, very sketchy springy. So I have it like seven clicks all the way from slow on the rebound. And once I set up my air pressure to my weight, I honestly haven't touched it. People say you're supposed to check the air pressure. I probably should to tell you if it's been leaking. It doesn't feel like it's been leaking and my stopper hasn't really moved down at all. So that kind of gives me an indication that it's not really changing that much, which is a good thing because you don't want to have to keep airing these up. Let's talk about the tire for a second because 
I'm a little perplexed by it. Um, like, it's fine, it rides nice, I like the way it feels, but it's a street tire, and this thing is kind of designed to go off-road. So if you're buying this wheel and you just want to ride it on the street, it's fine, you don't have to change the tire. But I've taken this on some pretty like gnarly off-road trails, and it, this wheel, this, this tire just doesn't give you any confidence. It's just, it's too slippery. So apparently there's a tire called a TR1, and it kind of looks a little bit like the stock like Sherman off-roady tire, it's knobby. And people say it kicks ass off-road and it's still nice on-road, still like nice to use. So I figured that should be the wheel that actually comes with this because then people can kind of take it wherever they want and still you know, have a good experience. Some things I don't like, I still really don't like this trolley handle. It's just, I don't know. It's hard to get out, it's hard to get up. It's, you know, this part of it's fine when you're going around the store. Uh, it's good, it gives you good control, but I just don't like this part, like the going up and down. And this right here at this level actually can, like this is your kill switch, I guess, which is dumb. There's no like kill switch button. You actually have to, it's, it has to do with how high the handle up is. And I just don't like it, so hopefully, they changed that on their new King Song wheel because no, I don't think anybody really likes this. <laughs> Another thing that I think is just not that great of engineering is this flap. And I'm nitpicking here, but it just really feels like an afterthought. So when you lift this up, I don't know if you guys can see in here, but there's like just white silicone and it just looks bad. And then when you put it down, it's just, you just kind of push it in and it's not, it's not, there's no satisfying click, there's no seal, there's no nothing. I kind of just wish this was a door and it's like a little lock or something and you know it's like, it's closed and it's sealed because I mean this is not a place you want water to get in. Yeah, so I don't like that. Another thing I think they could have done better is this little piece of weather stripping here. This is actually the weather stripping in between the housing of the controller and the body. So this is actually like your waterproofing for your controller. And you can pull it out just like this. Oh, that really, see? It's just kind of frictioned in there. And if you don't get it just right, it, uh, yeah, it moves around. And if you don't get it right, it could also have uh, water get in there, which I mean, could potentially get into your controller. So yeah, waterproofing on this guy. See like that's, yeah, it's really annoying to put in there. So yeah, anyways, I just don't like that. It doesn't give me a lot of confidence that this is like super waterproof up here. I think the in-motion uh, wheels are definitely better at waterproofing. But this is bad. I haven't had any water in there yet and I have driven it in the late rain. So take that with a grain of salt, I guess. So if you watched my range test video, uh, I got about 60 kilometers on it with, uh, you know, my speed, my weight, and I think that's good. Like, I've been using this as my runaround instead of my car, save some money, and it's been, oh, and it's been totally fine. Um, I can do all my errands with it, and I never once have felt like I was uh, having range anxiety. So I guess it's all perspective, right? So if you are coming from a Sherman where you're used to putting on 100 kilometer days, I mean, obviously this isn't the wheel for you, but like for the average person, 60 kilometers is a really long way still, right? So um, I'm, I'm pleased with the range actually. I guess we should talk about the infamous Kingsong S18 cutouts. Um, I've had none. No scrapes, no bruises. It's all good. Uh, I think it's a very reliable wheel. You know, people say you can get cutouts because it only has a, an 1100 watt hour battery and the motor is like pretty beefy. Um, but like take that into consideration, right? Like it's a, it's a pretty basic system. So if you're heavy and you're doing 50 up a hill and you got a little battery, well, you're kind of asking for trouble, right? So like I said, I'm about 180 pounds with gear. So I've actually set this down to tilt back at 40, you know? So I have a little bit more headroom because I don't really care about going that fast, to be honest. I just care about, you know, having fun and it doesn't always have to be speed. So with that, I've been 
zero issues at all. You know, if I'm if I'm going off road and I'm going up some steep hills and I know I have low battery, I'm going to be a little bit easier on it. Um, but yeah, I can't tell you uh, what the limit is because I haven't hit it. But uh, I'd say it's still a safe wheel um, as long as you understand the parameters of it. I still don't like that I can't really hear the beeps. I don't know why, but like the in-motion ones are just crazy loud. Like they scare people on the road sometimes. And then this one's so quiet that I can never hear it. <laughs> and I have a mountain bike helmet on, so I, I can hear everything. I can hear birds, but because that wind noise, I guess, you know, because you're probably not getting beeps if you're going slow. So as soon as you go fast, you get the wind noise and I can never hear the beeps at all. So I pretty much only rely on tilt back with this wheel. So that's why I actually set my, my max speed to be lower because I can feel it then, right? I'm not like trying to listen for beeps at 45 kilometers an hour or whatever. So I would do that if I were you as well. Um, yeah, and I haven't found a way to turn it up. To sum up, I just love this wheel, guys. I just love it so much. So happy I found it. It's, uh, it's a really great wheel, guys. It's not without its flaws, but no wheel is. Um, and the, the flaws that it does have are, to me, just small. They're not enough to not buy it because the ride quality just totally makes up for it. So I just want to thank e EVs once again for letting me try all the wheels out. It really gave me a good understanding of kind of what I wanted in a wheel. And it's totally got me into the suspension game. And for me personally, I don't know if I can go back to a non-suspension wheel, guys. Like, even on the street, it's just so nice. Just so, so good. Uh, I think it's the future. Um, might not be for everyone, but I don't know if I'll go back. But hopefully I won't eat my words on that. So yeah. Um, on another note, I uh, hope you guys like the look of this video. I'm hoping it's a little bit more professional. One day I'd love to get out of this tiny little basement suite and into like more of a studio for you guys, but I'm hoping this is an improvement at least. Um, trying to get better for you guys. So everyone that subscribed, just thank you so much. Uh, it makes it all worth it hearing your comments. Uh, it's just really, really nice. So keep doing it and uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna try to do another one of these on the InMotion V10F. That'll be about a 1500 kilometer review. So thanks again guys. Take care.